Hello, I'm Bob Lex, and I will be reading Acts 20, New International Version. When the uproar had ended, Paul sent for the disciples, and after encouraging them, said goodbye and set out for Macedonia. He traveled through that area, speaking many words of encouragement to the people, and finally arrived in Greece, where he stayed three months. Because the Jews made a plot against him just as he was about to, to sail for Syria, he decided to go back through Macedonia. He was accompanied by Suapter, son of uh, Pyrrhus, Timothy also, and from the province of Asia, Tychaeus and Tropius. These men went on ahead and waited for us at Troas, but we sailed from Philippi after the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and five day, <coughs> days later gained the others at Troas, where we stayed seven days. <clears throat> On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the t people, and because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting, Seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate. After talking until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. We went on ahead to the ship and sailed for uh, Asoas, where we were going to take Paul aboard. He had made this arrangement because he was going there on foot. When he met us, we took him aboard and went on to Madeline. The next day, we set sailed from there and arrived off Chios. The day after that, we crossed over to Samoas, and on the following day, arrived at Miltus. Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus to avoid spending time in the province of Asia, for he was in a hurry to reach Jerusalem, if possible, by the day of Pentecost. Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. When they arrived, he said to them, You know how I lived the whole time I was with you. From the first day I came into the province of Asia, I served the Lord with great humility and with tears, although I was severely tested by the plots of the Jews. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me, if only I may finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus has given me, that being the task of testifying the gospel of God's grace. Now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Therefore I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up <coughs> and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. 
I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. And everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had said this, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They all wept as he embraced them and kissed them. What grieved them most was his statement that they would never see his face again. Then they accompanied him to the ship. You know, the, the elders of the church at Ephesus, they knew that Paul was no designing, self-seeking, selfish man. Those, anyone in any office had to serve the Lord acceptably and profitably to others. Anyone who does this must do it with humility, which Paul did. Paul was a plain preacher, one that spoke his message so as to be clearly understood. He was also a powerful preacher. He preached the gospel as a testimony to these elders if they received it, but as a testimony against them if they rejected it. He was also a very driven preacher. He was very industrious and hardworking in his work. He was a faithful preacher. He did not keep back discipline when it was needed, when it was necessary. Nor did he keep back preaching Jesus and the cross. He was a truly Christian evangelical preacher. He did, he did not preach notions or doubtful matters, nor did he get into talking about affairs of the state or of the civil environment or of social problems. No. Paul's focus was Jesus and him crucified and him resurrected. 